It's official. We have had our hottest winter on record, according to NIWA data. So what does that mean for springtime or even summer? NIWA forecaster Chris Brandolino has all the answers and he joins me now. Good evening, Chris. So tell me, what does the hottest winter on record look and feel like? Kia ora, Lisa. Uh, look, it feels like uh, something that's remarkable. I mean, you know, we can throw numbers at you. Numbers were certainly paint a picture, but let's add some context. So, yeah, warmest winter on record. It was 1.1 degrees warmer, 1.14 if you want to be a purist, warmer than the long-term average. Okay, so that's the national temperature. We use a seven-station anomaly or seven-station series to kind of describe Aotearoa's temperature as a whole for the country. So, well, what does that mean? Well, think about this. Seven out of the ten warmest winters, that's seven out of the ten warmest winters have occurred since the year 2000, okay? And I'll throw this at you. There were about 70, maybe just a touch over 70 locations across New Zealand, north to south, that either had a warmest winter on record or a near warmest winter on record. Guess how many locations had a coldest winter on record or a near coldest winter on record? Oh, let me say three. Zero. So that really puts in context how unusually warm it was, not just for certain locations, but from top to bottom, 70 locations, record or near record warm. So, and, and you know, if you, if you, unless you timed your skiing holiday just right, you probably really saw that in, in the slopes, you know, the lack of snow. So what is happening here then, especially when you give us that figure of the time frame for the hottest winters on record? It's all happened in relatively short form, so... Are we talking global warming here? Oh, well, of course, that's always a part of the puzzle. But, you know, before the Internet explodes and, and, and sends hate email or tweets, let's put this in, again, context here. Warm years, warm seasons, warm days have always happened, always will. You know, in terms of what happened this past winter, our ocean temperatures were unusually warm. And as an island nation, we basically are in lockstep with our ocean temperatures. If our ocean temperatures are warmer than usual, there's a really good chance our air temperatures are going to follow suit. Also, wind direction, very simple. When you boil things down, where is the air coming from? Is it predominantly coming from a cold place? Is it predominantly coming from a warm place? Had a lot of northeasterly winds this past winter. That's a pretty warm place. And you throw in uh, a lot of high pressure and sunshine. And then you throw in the tailwind, climate change. Look, you know, grass will grow by itself. But if you throw on fertilizer, it grows more robustly, more quickly, more vigorously. So warm periods will happen by themselves. But uh, when you take the same warm period that we just had, right, and if you were to place that 10 years from now, 5 years from now, 50 years from now, you're going to get a warmer result. Same natural conditions, but because the earth is warming, you get a warmer result. Hey, we love numbers here on Checkpoint. So can you give us some the, uh, some of the highlights, some of the lowlights? And, and what was the worst place to be? Well, in terms of the winter season, yeah. I can tell you that, well, the most unusually warm place for the winter season as a whole, just glancing through my notes here, uh, was down on the South Island. The location that had the, um, the, um, the warmest, uh, most unusual daytime temperature uh, was 3.1 degrees and the warmest n- nighttime temperature 2.3 degrees. So it's farewell spit. That was a location that had the most unusually warm temperature when you compare it to history, the long-term average. Um, when you look at places like Auckland, for example, we had our second warmest winter. You head down to, because uh, I'm based in Auckland, I say we, head down to Wellington, uh, the fourth warmest winter down at the airport. Um, and a lot of places were dry. This is something that, that has our attention. So a lot of places in the South Island had a very dry winter, and the soils are unusually dry for the time of year. And that's something we're going to have to watch as we head into the spring season. You know, those northeasterly winds, Lisa, I spoke of, that was uh, in line with uh, the emerging, let's call it emerging climate driver called La Nina. What's a climate driver? Put simply, a lot of people in their car right now, I imagine, heading home from work. A climate driver is who is sitting at the steering wheel of Mother Nature's car, because that's going to tell you which direction you're going to go. And La Nina is a climate driver, and that's emerging in the tropical Pacific. It hasn't quite fully emerged yet, but it's in that process. And as a consequence, a lot of northeast winds. In the springtime, that typically equates to, or at least favors, historically drier-than-usual conditions 
for the lower portion of the uh, of the North Island and for much of the South Island. And that's one thing we're watching down in the South Island. The soils are unusually dry. Irrigation season may start early. We've got to wait for those soils to get about 10 Celsius. That's what really starts to spur and sustain um, plant growth or the soils get that warm. So, And that will happen. And once that happens, they need water. And how do people water? Well, either comes from the sky, irrigation, things like that. So we've got to watch the, the conditions down across the South Island because if the irrigation starts soon, that's something that bears watching, especially if we don't get a lot of rain during springtime. Yeah, and also Aucklanders who are having four-minute showers or less will be watching the rainfall as well. So does drier mean warmer? What are your predictions for no. summer? It, it, uh, well, it's a bit premature to go into summer, but I, I can tell you that with La Nina, I'll say it like this. When La Nina summers historically tend to be warm. Why? Our ocean temperatures tend to be warm. Our ocean temperatures, as I mentioned earlier, are running quite unusually warm around our coast, around our immediate coastline. And also, they are unusually warm out across the Tasman Sea. And during La Nina's, which I mentioned we're going toward, historically, those ocean temperatures are warm during spring, which is why we think with high confidence spring will be warmer. And they also are typically warmer in the summer season. A couple of years ago, last, the last La Nina event, we had a marine heat wave. A marine heat wave is basically a sustained period uh, where the waters are highly unusually warm, just boiling down quite simply. So if our waters are going to be warm, right, from spring and maybe even summer, that tips the odds toward a warmer than usual spring and for that to persist into summer. Now, it's certainly not our official outlook, but if you're trying to deduce, you know, where, how are things lining up? And with northeast winds, that's a warm wind direction. Northeast winds also quite warm for the South Island because they're heading pretty much parallel to the coast, parallel to the land. You're, You're getting some warming effects as air moves over the land. So, I mean, it's early, of course, and we will issue our our official summer outlook in late November. But, yeah, that's how things are lining up in terms of, uh, you know, the next three months and even beyond. Thanks, Chris. We'll hold you to your predictions. That's the NIWA forecaster, Chris Brandolino there. Uh, And it was our hottest winter on record, according to their official data.